Good Wednesday evening and welcome to the NCW Life Evening News. I'm Grant Olson. Here are a few of the stories we have coming up for you tonight. Two Western Washington people are wanted for a theft at the East Wenatchee Costco in which they allegedly stole more than $2,000 worth of goods. A total of 316 students have been awarded scholarships by the Washington Apple Education Foundation. Hot temperatures expected again tomorrow with cooler and wetter weather for Friday and parts of Saturday. A Quincy man was hospitalized Tuesday after illegally entering a T-intersection on Highway 28. The Washington State Patrol says 31-year-old Tyson J. Hubbard was driving southbound on road W Northeast, about 25 miles east of Soap Lake, when he entered the highway about 3.30 p.m. His Ford Focus struck the side of a travel trailer pulled by a westbound Ram pickup. Hubbard was injured and taken to Sacred Heart Medical Center in Spokane for treatment. The travel trailer was destroyed, but the other driver suffered no injuries. Troopers said Hubbard will be cited for negligent driving and fail, failure to yield to traffic. Chelan County rescue workers were among those who helped find a lost child missing for 24 hours Monday near the Cleellum River. Kittitas County Sheriff's Office says the 10-year-old girl was found about 3 p.m. Monday after disappearing from a family gathering near the Cathedral Pass trailhead about 2 p.m. the day before. Assistance during the search on foot and by air was provided by officers and volunteers from seven counties as well as the State Patrol and Mountain Rescue teams. It was two Kittitas County search and rescue volunteers who found the girl about a mile and a half south of the family meeting place. The child had spent the night in the forest after following the river to search for a bridge. Officials say the girl's family arrived in the U.S. from Afghanistan just two years ago. Two Western Washington residents are wanted for a theft at the East Wenatchee Costco in which they allegedly stole more than $2,000 worth of goods and then rammed their truck into another vehicle as they made their escape. Police are seeking 54-year-old Terry Lee Cleaver of Olympia on a Douglas County issued warrant on Wednesday, charging him with organized retail theft, reckless driving, and hit and run. Also charged is 21-year-old Brenda L. Christensen of Seattle. East Wenatchee Police say back on January 11th, the pair loaded about $2,400 worth of Costco goods into a silver Ford F-150 without paying. While exiting the parking lot, they allegedly backed the truck into an occupied Cadillac, injuring the couple riding in it. Police say Cleaver and Christensen made off with electronics, alcohol, food, clothing, and dog chow. Two portable generators worth about $1,300 were later recovered from that theft. A Grant County Sheriff's deputy swam from the shore of Lanise Lake to aid a struggling swimmer. In this video from Grant County Fire District 8, Deputy Josh Fitzhugh is seen swimming to the aid of a man holding onto a raft. The Sheriff's Office said the man had ventured out onto the lake to retrieve the raft over the weekend, but then became too exhausted to climb aboard or return to shore. Fitzhugh gave the man a flotation device and then pulled him and his craft back to shore. The swimmer was tired but did not require any medical aid. Lanise Lake is about four miles east of Beverly, eight miles southeast of Wanapum Dam. When we come back, the Chelan County PUD today began its annual round of aerial inspections on high voltage power lines around the county. A ceremony at Omi Gardens was held for the very first graduating class of Eastmont School District's Project Search. A total of 316 students have been awarded scholarships by the Washington Apple Education Foundation. And the Wenatchee School District and nonprofit Small Miracles will offer free meals this summer. We'll tell you where and when. I'm Grant Olson and you're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Blue Lagoon Pool and Spa located on South Wenatchee Ave has the largest selection of spas and swim spas in town. Stay cool this summer in an artesian swim spa and use it all year long. We enjoy helping families reconnect one spa at a time. 
Hot tubs are proven to improve sleep and decrease arthritis pain. Our passion is water, so please bring us a water sample and we will help you diagnose your pool or spa water for free. Blue Lagoon Pool and Spa, your pool and spa experts. The Lake Chelan Rotary Club invites you to experience Cycle Chelan, held June 24th, 2023. Pick your thrill from four rides. The Metric Century Challenge, Cycle Divino, the Lake Loop, or the Butte Blast. All profits from Cycle Chelan are used to support student scholarships and other charitable activities of the Lake Chelan Rotary Club. Cycle Chelan 2023, a route for every rider. Pick your thrill today. The Chelan County PUD today began its annual round of aerial inspections on high voltage power lines around the county. The surveys are conducted by helicopter to check for encroaching vegetation, corrosion and other faults in the electrical transmission system. The PUD warns residents not to be alarmed if they see helicopters coming close to overhead lines over the next few weeks. Flights will take place as weather permits, gathering a bird's eye view of more than 300 miles of electric infrastructure. A ceremony at Omi Gardens was held for the very first graduating class of Eastmont School District's Project Search. The program is designed for young adults with intellectual and developmental disabilities entering their last year of high school to prepare to enter the workforce. The seven interns worked in rotating departments at Stamilt Growers for the last nine months. At the ceremony, the graduates were honored by family, friends, teachers, and mentors, and Emily Hensley was named in turn of the year. The other graduates recognized were Kenan Watson, Karen Cervantes, Cole Hale, Joshua Hernke, Olivia Leonhardt, and Luis Perez. A total of 316 students have been awarded scholarships by the Washington Apple Education Foundation. The foundation, which is based out of Wenatchee, provides recipient support services led by volunteers, virtual mock interviews, guided resume services, and more. The majority of the scholarships went to students from Chelan, Douglas, Grant, Okanagan, and Yakima counties, with 79% of total recipients being first-generation college students. To be eligible for a scholarship, students must have family ties to Washington's fruit industry or be interested in a Washington tree fruit career pathway or be a Washington State high school senior or current college student on a pathway that aligns with potential work in the tree fruit industry. Overall, the foundation sees 86% of recipients complete their degrees in four years or less. The Wenatchee School District and nonprofit Small Miracles will offer free meals this summer. From June 26 to July 27th, Wenatchee School District will serve breakfast from 7.30 a.m. to 8.30 a.m. and then lunch from 11.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. all at Columbia Elementary School. It's for kids age 18 and younger. Small Miracles will provide a lunchtime meal from 11 a.m. to noon at several park locations from June 26 to August 3rd. Small Miracle will also have a presence in Wenatchee, East Wenatchee, Peshastin, Kashmir, and Rock Island. All meals will be served Monday through Thursday, and all times and locations can be found on the NCW Life website. Coming up next in tonight's feature story, Washington Senator Maria Cantwell met Monday with fentanyl survivors and people who help with recovery from the powerful narcotic. Unseasonably hot temperatures through tomorrow and then cooler with rain and thunderstorms Thursday night and Friday. I'll have all the details in your complete North Central Washington weather forecast. That and much more still to come tonight. Please stay with us.
Did you know people 65 or older make up 12% of the U.S. population but consume 34% of all prescription drugs? Protect yourself and your aged loved ones from prescription errors. Always read labels carefully to avoid mistakes. Ask your pharmacist if over-the-counter medicines conflict with your prescriptions and never skip doses or take more than is prescribed. This message sponsored by Aging and Adult Care of Central Washington. Call 1-800-572-4459 for prescription assistance. Hi, everybody. Dan Koontz alongside Jesse Coble from Alpine Pioneer. We're switching from the cold of winter to the heat of summer. That can put a lot of stress in your HVAC unit. Yeah, it really can, Dan. I would recommend that you get a maintenance. It can catch any potential problems that you might have during the peak of summer. And it's just a good idea to do on all season changes. Great idea. Good advice. Turn to the experts at Carrier and Alpine Pioneer. For heat and air, call Alpine Pioneer. Thanks, Jesse. Thank you. It's Click It RV's lowest price guarantee sale going on now at your neighborhood Click It RV. Be a winner like me and get the Click It RV. With zero down and no payments till September, now is the time to own your dream RV. Get the Click It RV now. Are you going to be mad, bro? Get never before deep, deep discounts on trailers, fifth wheels, toy haulers, and motorhomes. Plus the best selection, highest trading values ever, and a lifetime warranty. Nobody beats the discounts at Click It RV. I'm Richard Sherman and we guarantee it. On Frontage Road. In tonight's feature story, Washington Senator Maria Cantwell met Monday with fentanyl survivors and people who help with recovery from the powerful narcotic. The roundtable in Everett focused on how best to address addiction enforcement from the federal level down to Washington cities and towns. I've been uh, conducting the beginnings of a statewide tour, listening to our communities across the state and listening to people like Executive Summers and uh, those here with lived experiences so that we can have a more federal coordinated response with local governments to fight this crisis. It is a crisis and our nation needs to understand that. Twice before we were really called on to have a more integrated approach, first with methamphetamine problems and then with opioids. And it seems like this crisis has come back even bigger, and that is why we have to meet it at the national level with a task force response that helps the communities get the resources they need to fight it and coordinate with DEA and our local law enforcement to tackle this. I have been in recovery, uh, long-term recovery for 12 years. I celebrated 12 years of freedom from addiction in April this year. Um, I strongly advocate for people who are unable to use their voice um, to speak to these issues. Um, I started this organization when I was two years into my own recovery, and one of the things that we started with was bringing awareness to these issues. We are now blatantly aware of these issues, and so now we focus on our other parts of our mission, which is to restore hope in the community and help love people back to life. Fentanyl is, is a whole new monster. It's not, it's not like meth, it's not, you know, like other opiates. It, it, it really um, enslaves people and, and takes over all that they are. Um, I think long-term care is, is one of the only effective means for, for combating this. Um, you know, 28 days or five days, you know, that's not enough. Um, I personally, you know, did, six months of long-term inpatient um, and what was really key for me was tackling you know a co-occurring disorder not just tackling my addiction but tackling my mental health issues as well learning how to um, live a healthy life with those um, between medication therapy um, it took time and it took work um, and it took support a lot of support Time now for a check of your North Central Washington weather forecast. Boy, it was a hot Wednesday all across North Central Washington. In some areas, 
20 degrees above where we should be and a good day to head to Lake Chelan. Boy, that lake would have felt good out there today. And even with those high clouds, we had plenty of those out there today. It was still a warm one around north central Washington, unofficially at Pangborn Airport in Wenatchee, East Wenatchee, I should say, 90 degrees. And we may even bump that up a little bit when we get together again tomorrow. 76 is our normal for this time of year and our record high, 99 degrees set in 2015. 59 our low this morning, well above 53. That's our normal for this time of year. And our record cold, 42 set back in 2002. Sunrise 505 and the sun sets at 855 tonight. So sunset getting a lot later. We're going to pass nine o'clock by next week. Tomorrow's temperatures still going to be warm out there. A little bit cooler actually in the Columbia Basin. 89 for Moses Lake and Afreda, 90 in Quincy, and then warmer from Wenatchee into Chelan up into Omac. I believe more clouds will move into the Columbia Basin and that'll keep those temperatures down a little bit tomorrow. 89 in Leavenworth and a beautiful 86 degrees if you're headed up to Lake Wenatchee. All right, let's take a look at what we're seeing as far as drought intensity around Washington State. Here we go. Here's Wenatchee. We are in the moderate range for a drought, but look at how bad it is. This is extreme in western Washington, so we are hoping for some rain. It might come on Friday. Tonight, increasing clouds. It will be nice and and mild out there. We're talking lows in the upper 60s. We'll see some 70s for lows around parts of our area. For Thursday, we'll talk partly cloudy skies. Some clouds will move in and we'll see some scattered thunderstorm activity develop. Most of that will stay to our south and east, but some will move over. So we'll see that chance, especially by Thursday night, going to be warm with temperatures around 90. For Friday, a cool down. Notice we will see a northwesterly flow of air into Washington. That'll cool us down. A 40% chance of showers, a little discrepancy, weather service talking rain. This weather model, not so much for Friday. We'll know a lot more tomorrow for Wenatchee's graduation. Saturday, partly cloudy, isolated showers. It will stay better anyway with highs in the mid 80s. And then folks, by the end of the weekend, we are warming right back up. High pressure building back into the Eastern Pacific. Mostly sunny skies all over the Western U.S. Talking high temperatures Sunday in the upper 80s, so a beautiful end to our upcoming weekend. And then kicking off our next work week, yeah, sunny and hot. Back to the hot weather. There we have it right here in eastern Washington. Highs near 90. Tuesday, sunny. We are going to see some windy conditions. High pressure to our west, low pressure to our east, and that's going to kick up those winds Tuesday. Still going to be hot, though, with high temperatures right around that 90-degree mark. Taking a look now at your seven-day forecast. Very mild overnight, 68. A chance for thunderstorms. Then over the next Thursday, Friday, Saturday, so three days, a chance for those thunderstorms. Big cool down on Friday, down to 80 degrees. 84 for your Saturday. And then we're right back to the heat on Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. Sunny skies with high temperatures in the upper 80s and lower 90s. And that's a look at your North Central Washington weather forecast. Coming up next, tonight's sports report with Eric Grandstrom and more as the NCW Life Evening News continues right after this. Celebrate the class of 2023 with the NCW Life Channel. Join us Friday, June 9th for Wenatchee High School's commencement exercises live from Leboff to Field at the Apple Bowl starting at 8 p.m. Coverage is brought to you by Apple Valley Honda, Confluence Health, JDSA Law, Merry Maids, and Mini Blinds and more. Celebrate the class of 2023 with the NCW Life Channel.
The Mariners snapped a three-game losing streak with a 4-1 win in San Diego last night. Logan Gilbert was dominant to over seven innings, while Teoscar Hernandez and Julio Rodriguez each homer as Seattle got back to the 500 mark on the season. The 1-2. Breaking ball on the ground. Ken can't get there. J.P. Crawford hits third. It's coming home. The Mariners have taken the lead on a two-out base knock by Ty France. So grow and understand what you're doing right and wrong. That's a ribby. That is a ribby. Yes, it is. And the Padres tie the score one-to-one. -one. Oscar Hernandez has lined back to the pitcher and struck out swinging. High drive, deep left center field. Look at this baby ride. Goodbye. Home run, Teoscar Hernandez. And the Mariners have a 2-1 lead. Tail with home run number 10, RBI number 31. The Mariners, man, there's the first home run since the first game of this road trip. Holy moly. Julio, this one is gone. Julio, second deck. 3-1 Mariners. Welcome. He got a hanger and absolutely brutalized it. My goodness. That is a joyous scene right there. 436 projected feet. No doubt about it. When you have the big bats doing big things, that's a skimmer mm. the opposite way. France pedal to the metal. He's coming home. Here's the throw from Dixon. France slides in safe. Trying to put this baby. On the right side of the column for the Mariners, the pitch. Comebacker, slow roller. Here's Cabby. He throws. He got him. And the Mariners win this game. Manager Scott Service says Logan Gilbert gave them exactly what they needed to bounce back from being swept in Texas over the weekend. A really good effort uh, by, by all of our guys, but starting with, with Logan. Um, awesome outing. Um, you know, was on top of them all night long. And I think the, the thing that we've been talking to Logan a little bit about is, you know, game awareness, knowing where you're at. And I thought his execution of pitches in that seventh inning were maybe as good as they were all night long, knowing that you're kind of at the uh, the end of the game, empty the tank, but you keep executing pitch by pitch. It was awesome to see, and it's really nice to have Andres Munoz back. Um, you know, it really shortens the game for us. Just, it doesn't sound like a big deal, three outs there, but it really does, you know, just change the whole momentum of the game, and, and Paul's having a great year there. I think offensively tonight, um, Move in the right direction. Talk about a few things before the game, some adjustments we wanted to make as a team. I thought we did it. Um, stayed in the middle of the field a little bit more, but uh, there's not many nights I talk about maybe the one at bat that I didn't get a hit that really changed the game for me. Um, JP Crawford in the fourth inning is down an 0 2 count. He somehow works a walk. After that, it forced the pitcher to throw 17 more pitches, and now the starter's out of the game in the fifth inning. Those little things like that that maybe not show up in a box score is a big deal change the game. And uh, those type of things we got to be cognizant of and understand where we're at in the game. But heck of a job by our guys. Obviously, home run, J.P. laid. Teoscar had a big night. Uh, you know, some good things there offensively. Hopefully, we can build on here um, heading through the rest of this road trip. Hernandez, Rodriguez, and Ty France each collected two hits in the game, while Andros Munoz made his return from injury to retire the side in the eighth, hitting 100 miles an hour on the radar gun. The two teams were at it this afternoon earlier to wrap up that series. We'll have highlights tomorrow morning on Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. In American, other American League West action yesterday, Jace Peterson was 5-for-5 five five with two home runs and five RBI to lead Oakland to an 11-2 win over the Pirates. Toronto's Kevin Gaussman struck out 13 over seven innings, while George Springer and Bo Bichette each homered in the Blue Jays' 5-1 win over the Astros. Adonis Garcia was 4-for-4, four four, including a home run to help Texas with its uh, win its 40th game of the season by a score of 6-4 to four over St. Louis. Mike Trout and Matt Tice each each hit two run singles in a five run fifth inning for the Angels as Los Angeles topped the Cubs by a final of seven to four. Too many errors and too many walks cost Wenatchee its first loss of the season to Springfield last night. 5-4 was the final. It was the home opener for the Apple Sox at West Coast League Baseball with Wenatchee earning an early lead, but a four-run, three-error third inning gave the Drifters an advantage they'd never give up. I had to call here on the NCW Life Channel. Pitch on the way, bounces in, goes all the way to the backstop. The runner breaks for home, and he will score standing up. Apple Sox get an early lead on a wild pitch. Vassar looking for his first strikeout of the summer collegiate season. The pitch on the way to the plate to swung on a hit back past the mound. Second base for one. The throw to first is in time. What a double play. A run will score on the play. 
But what a double play by Fred Buxton at second base. Bunt up the first baseline. Vassar off the mound will scoop with a glove, throw high, and two runs are going to score on the play. And uh, it's just become a disaster here for the Apple Sox defensively with another error. That's their third of the inning. Or excuse me, Gore at third. Voltaggio at second. This pitch swung on the ground to do the shortstop. Bobbles the ball. Fields. And now will run towards third base. A run's going to score on the air on the shortstop. Jaco. Pitch here swung on a hit uh, through the hole. Seeing eye single is going to score a run. Right fielder comes up with the ball and bobbles it. And everybody going to be safe here. Give an RBI to Gage Bruce. And that's our first run driven in in the ball game on a hit when they first began in 2000. Runner from first goes, the pitch is swung on a miss, and a throw down to second base goes into center field. Another run's going to score on a throwing error by the catcher, and it's now 6-2. to two. This is the first actual chance I've had it. Ooh, a high fly ball to left field deep, and it, it is, is gone. gone. Round tripper for Aiden Van Runsom. And maybe that'll be the charge that puts a little life in the bats for the Apple Sox here tonight as Aiden gets the second home run of the Apple Sox early season, makes it a 6-3 ball game. 0-2, oh, the count to Olin, swung on a chop towards the left side of the infield, backing up the shortstop from his pocket, will throw to second in time. The runner at first is safe, and a run will score on the fielder's choice. Kalnan ready, and the 2-2 pitch is a check swing. He went around, and that'll do it for the Apple Sox here tonight as they fall to the Springfield Drifters by a final of 6-4. to four. Well, you notice I said the final score is 6-4. to four. However, the official box score reads 5-4. A confusing play ended the sixth with a strikeout to then batter interference on the stolen base attempt ending the inning. The scoreboard at the ballpark added a run on the play, but the umpire had ruled the play dead. Apple Sox coach Mitch Darlington joined myself after the ball game and lamented about the poor defense and the walks. Yeah, yeah, just too many free bags. Uh, you know, had seven walks, five errors. That's uh, not a recipe to win a ball game. So really got to clean that up. Um, we'll have some new guys rolling in tomorrow. Uh, and yeah, just got to be better defensively. That was a tough situation for Quincy Bunt uh, on the third base side. And you, you make the play defensively, but then you don't have somebody covering the bag at first. And I was talking about that on the a broadcast. And sometimes you got guys that, you know, on a 10 day contract or something like that or playing positions, you only have what 10 position guys. So you might be playing a position you're not used to. And oh, yeah, I got to cover the back. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's that's just kind of a product of guys rolling into town. We haven't had a lot of time to really practice as a team, run through bunt defenses, that sort of a thing yet. But uh, all things that we're going to be able to clean up and uh, we look forward to cleaning it up and, and getting better tomorrow. Wenatchee and Springfield play again tonight, 635 at Paul Thomas Senior State in the game broadcast on radio with Joel Norman on Sunny FM. In other West Coast League play last night, Cowlitz hung on to hand Bellingham its first loss of the season, 4-3. Jason Waller, 2-2 two for two with three RBI to lead Portland over Kamloops, 11-4. Tyler Davis had a three-run home run and drove in four for Victoria in a 9-5 win over Walla Walla. Ridgefield scored two runs in the bottom of the ninth to walk off Edmonton, 6-5 to give the Raptors their first win of the season. Roberto Nunez as his three-run home run highlighted a five-run third inning for Port Angeles as the lefties beat Bend on the road 7-1. Kelowna brought nine men to the plate at a five-run eighth inning to close the door on the 9-0-9-3. Yakima Valley scored three runs in the bottom of the ninth with Gabe Villa, uh, Villaflores, RBI single, giving the Pippins a walk-off 4-3 win to hand Corvallis their first loss of the season. After it was all said and done last night, Victoria increased its lead in the West Coast League's North Division to 5-0 record. When Anchi and the nine and Bellingham all lost, so they're each a game and a half back in second. Kelowna even its record at two and two, and it's two and a half games out. That's a look at sports news. Have a happy Wednesday. On the next edition of Wake Up in Anchi Valley this Saturday, there's no lack of things to do, but put this on your list. Come here to the Community Education Garden at the intersection of Springwater and Western and Wenatchee because Marco will tell you why. 10th anniversary, excuse me, 50th anniversary of the Master Gardener program. We're celebrating on Saturday from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. And you'll get to meet for the very first time on television, Bonnie Orr, <laughs> on the next edition of Wake Up in Valley.
And that will do it for our newscast tonight. For more on these stories and other news from around North Central Washington, you can find us on Facebook or our website at ncwlife.com. And remember, if you see news happening, we'd like to hear from you. You can send us an email at news at ncwlife.com or give us a call at 888-6295. I'm Grant Olson. Thanks so much for being with us and have a great night.